Kenyan President William Ruto has scrapped planned tax hikes, bowing to pressure from protesters who'd stormed parliament and launched demonstrations across the country. It came a day after clashes between police and protesters that left at least 23 people dead and scores wounded, according to medics. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken thanked Ruto for taking steps to reduce tension and underscored the importance of security forces demonstrating restraint. Well, for more, we can bring in Dr. Alex Vines, head of the Africa program at Chatham House, the Chatham House think tank in London. Uh, thank you for speaking to us on France 24. Are you uh, surprised by the president's move then, or do you see this as something he believed to be a logical step? Look, it's a logical step. Absolutely. He had no other, uh, well, uh, he had no other option. He did need to compromise. And, and remember that he himself has branded uh, himself as a as a child of of, of, of the masses. That he uh, was a hustler and has come good as president of, of Kenya. So he's deeply shocked by the, the, the what is a popular movement against him. And so by scrapping the bill, uh, he's hoping to reduce tensions. We'll have to see now uh, whether the demonstrations continue. There, Kenya has seen protests in the past, but this movement has notably seen people bridge uh, tribal uh, and other divisions to keep, uh, to keep this finance bill from becoming law, and not to mention uh, the deaths that have been denounced by medics. Do you think that this movement stands out compared to others? This movement does stand out uh, compared with others because uh, if you ask me who the name of the leaders are, I haven't got any idea at all. These are <coughs> people using uh, social media platforms they've organized across uh, Kenya uh, and caught the government of Kenya and President Ruto completely by surprise. I mean, last week their narrative was, was very hard. They said that this was also linked with criminal groups. And now they've had to compromise. The bill has been, uh, has been uh, withdrawn. And Mr. Ruto is now talking about dialogue. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see who he dialogues with. Uh, this, I think, is a new phenomenon, but it's also reflective of just how well connected Kenyans are, many of them, onto social media platforms. They are more advanced than many other countries in Africa, including the one I'm in right at the moment, Mozambique. Right. Well, what I mean, what dialogue then could we see? Because we've, we're hearing from some demonstrators who've said on social media that they're going to continue these protests uh, despite uh, the withdrawal. Uh, how far do you think this will go? Well, the plan uh, on their websites uh, and through social media last week was uh, to have the, 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 you know, the siege of parliament, which happened, and a burning of it. And that's where the unfortunate 23 dead, it's probably going to be higher than that, and the scores of injured that you've mentioned to occurred. Uh, and today on that program from last week is meant to be a, a siege of, of, of uh of the state house, the president, presidential palace. We'll see whether that happens. I have doubts because I think security be very tight. But um, there's still uh, a, a, a significant number of people calling for President Ruto to resign. That's not going to happen. Uh, and I do think the the uh, withdrawal of the bill yesterday uh, will help to reduce tensions. The reality, though, of course, is that Kenya is going to have to find austerity elsewhere. It is very indebted. Money is tight. And so uh, putting up taxes was one way the government was going to do it. It's going to have to find another way now. Well, yeah, I was just going to ask you, I mean, I, you're not an economist, but this decision still leaves the president caught between uh, the citizens' demands and uh, those of lenders like the IMF. Uh, how can uh, Kenya pull itself, pull itself out of debt and, and get its fiscal situation back on track? So uh, Kenya is strategic and important, including for the Bretton Woods institutions. So they have tried to work out a pathway that uh, ha would uh, allow Kenya to avoid calling to, uh, to go into what is called the common framework, which countries like Ghana uh, and, and uh, Chad and Zambia have done. Uh, and the, the problem of doing that is it doesn't allow you to borrow more money from private markets. That's one of the things the Kenyans did want that option. So we'll see. But um, President Ruto didn't create this problem. I will defend him on this. He's inherited uh, this from uh, his predecessor, President Uhuru Kenyatta, and Uhuru Kenyatta's uh, uh, predecessor. 
uh, because um, there's been very profligate borrowing for large infrastructure projects, and and now it is uh, uh, you know the, now the debtors are asking for their money. So so this is the inheritance that Ruto ha ha has taken over as president of Kenya. All right, Dr. Alex Vines from Chatham House. Thank you very much for your analysis.